anything that gets people away from the smartwatch or the illegal watch, the illegal watch is a friend. Yeah. To me, I see it like this. It's like it's helping. It's helping. It's funny. You would. So you're basically putting smartwatch in the same bin as illegal watches. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's my disdain. Ah, you're all for them. Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to the show. I say back to the show because we're probably, well, this is months <laughs> separated, but we're wearing- No, no, no. Yeah, it's not like we wear the same clothes, but anyway. No. How are you, sir? Good, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Today's concept is six watches we love, but others find embarrassing or really hate. Yeah, it's a good one, it's a good one, it's a good one. <laughs> uh, so we pick, obviously we pick three each. Yep. Guys, share your nominations in the, um, comments down below and also we'll do a quick wristwatch check even though we're wearing the oh. same clothes as the last episode which will be about a month or so separated that gorgeous I Islander. would still be wearing this even yeah. if it was another day <laughs> nice Islander Northport I uh, with the seafoam green dial depending gorgeous. on when this video comes out this might be in stock I can't really say you, that happens a lot when we record yeah last time we did I was wearing the abalone monster yeah and yeah sure enough it was out of stock yeah. by the time the video came out nice. it's kind of funny uh, yeah, so uh, I went to Northport, it's a Miyota 9015 movement. Gorgeous. You know, sapphire, blah, blah, blah. And my Damasco, Damasco DC86. The beast there. Yeah. That on really. The, on the full bracelet. That really needs to be on an astronaut's wrist. Yeah, it's crazy. It's. The, that, the hand also, it's funny when, when we were discussing the wristwatch check last time. Yeah. I automatically think of my Fortis with the 5100 Lamania, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. then it's also in the Orfina, the Top Gun. Okay. You commented on a post that, because I, I saw, finally got to see Top Gun Maverick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had something to do with the fuselage? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So on the F-18 EF, which is the Super Hornet, which is the, the plane that's flown in that movie. Right. Uh, just forward of the gun is a wart on the nose of the plane, and that's okay. an antenna. And when I started at my engineering career in 1998, um, that was the first product I worked on. Wow. I qualified, I qualified that thing environmentally. We, wow. we flew down to Florida together, and vibration, wow. temperature, altitude, shock. Right. All that fun stuff, drop and, tests. And how is your flying lessons going? Oh, well, thank you for asking. It's yeah. going well. It's, uh, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's going good. Going good. I'm up to high 20s in my in my flight hours now. Wow. Uh, so it's, uh, Congrats. yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Are you going to do a Travolta and have a runway that goes up to your front? I, I don't think my neighbors would like <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know it's true. Yeah, I know he does. He has like a whole covered walkway yeah. too, right? Yeah, I've seen that. Because he flies like a 7... An old 747, set. right? No, 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 no. He's like a 707 or a 727, an older plane. 747 is a trend. Ah, okay. It's a wide body cargo plane. Yeah. I, so, you know, uh, when I heard about that, I didn't believe it. So I, yeah. I looked up the airport and then I did a Google map yeah. thing and you, yeah. can you can see the it. runway yeah. going up to his house. Yeah, yeah taxiway and everything. Yeah. And, and then, he parks it outside. yeah, instead of a garage, do you say garage? You could say it. I know a garage. Garage. But I'm also from Long Island, so right. all my words come out <laughs> wrong anyway. <Right>. Garage. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it's like adjacent to his house. Yeah. And you can tell it's his house because it's the only one with a pool within like hundreds of miles. <laughs> like, it's obviously Travolta. Yeah. Yeah, Travolta chat. Oh, no, yeah. That is, sorry. No, I have seen that though. That's really nifty. That I will nifty. not have that, no. Uh, no. no oh, probably oh. not. Oh, well. Well, if you, if you sell some more Islanders, maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what is your first pick? Would you like uh, to go first? Yeah, I can, sure. So let me see. Uh, it's all in my head, right? Ah, so my first one... <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit it. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me, uh, tell me. It's an Invicta. It's the the Joker watch. Oh right, right. Yeah. Right. So it's so I guess it's really a rip right off of uh, uh, is it Constantine Chaikin? He made right. the like the real like you know hot horology like you know 
2892 base. He's got the eyeball spin. It's like a fifteen thousand dollar watch. So when they when they spin, what are they? It's the time. I think it's the hours on. Hours? This is that's that's the, the the shaken watch. Yeah. It's the hours are on the left eye, and I think the minutes are on the right. And right. The tongue does stuff. It's really cool. Right. So an Invicta, not to be outdone, right? They came out. It's it's DC licensed from DC uh -huh. Comics, um, but they have the Joker, and it kind of looks like the same thing, except the eyes. One eye does like the day, and the other eye does like the date. And then it has hands, whereas the Chaken Watch doesn't have hands. Right. Um, so it's got hands so to tell the time. So they modify the movement for this. I don't know if they modify the movement, or it might be like a. Um, I wouldn't. I, I honestly don't know. Okay. It, it might not be because you can get watches that have the the month on or the day on one wheel and then the other. You know, the quartz chrono, right? It's like fifty plus millimeters. And, wow. And it's like twenty. Thick. So for a person, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so for a person wearing two beautiful watches, what on earth? Possessed you to... So, to <laughs> I don't know if I would wear... I don't know if I can really wear it. I mean, it's 53 millimeters. Right. Like I said, it's like 20 thick. Right. I mean, but why do you like it? I don't know. It's just cool looking. Yeah. It's really cool looking. It's got a sticker, it's of, it's got a sticker of like four grand. <laughs> but then... But then the, four grand Invicta. Well, it's the Invicta retail price. Oh, so it's like... You, you, can, you can buy it for 99 or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a couple hundred bucks. Fair enough. Um, but no, it's a really... I just think it's cool looking. Yeah. So I don't think I would pull it off, but like the one that like I dig is like it's in Joker colors. It's like purple anodized, like the case. Are you a fan of bracelet? Batman, right? Not really. I just think it looks really nifty. Right. Yeah. I mean, of course, I've seen most of the movies. Um, most of the. Well, it was uh, the 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 you know the pow. It was Adam West. Was Adam it? West was the original nineteen right. sixties Batman. Yeah. If you had to pick a Batman. Oh goodness, I'd hate to say it. I'm like a Michael Keaton because that's yeah. my. So the colors that, fit with um, Jack Nicholson's kind yeah, of portrayal. Yeah, that kind of Joker color, yeah. Right, Yeah, not the modern, like the Heath Ledger kind of. Right, and right, the, right, It was Heath Ledger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, um, I don't know, it just, you know, would I wear one? I don't know if I'd rock it, but I do like it. I gotta admit that. You like, like that? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I would have never imagined yeah. it. I think, you know, maybe because it's the whole play on the Chaken watch and that I dig that, because that, right. that watch, I remember when I saw that watch for the first time, I was walking, I was in Basel. There's yeah. a little enclave of like high-end watchmakers, mm -hmm. and that watch was, you know, in in the glass. Mm. And you, I think he had just come out with it. I mm. saw it, and I was like, "That's so cool." Do you know what year that was? Oh, that has to be like eight, seventeen, eighteen. Right, not that right, long right, ago. Right, right. Um, right. And then you know, the Invicta one came out, and again, Invicta they do a Superman. You know, it's all DC, right? But it's so officially Batman, licensed. It's officially licensed, yeah. which it has to be because they call it the Joker. Right. Um, but yeah, so. That's, my That's pick. crazy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm almost a, like like it's supposed to be like watches that we love and people like. Yeah. Well, I feel bad. Like I almost feel bad that I like it. But. Okay. Well, <laughs> now I feel kind of like mine is rather boring. Because <laughs> it's like, damn it! I should have come up with something really. That was so cool. Um, it's it's Hublot. Okay. Usually a brand that we rant on. Yeah. Go I, ahead. I was researching into Hublot, and there's two Hublots. There's there's the original Hublot, and then there's the post Jean-Paul yeah. uh, Beaver Hublot, which yeah. is something completely different. And the reason is because the original was started by a guy called Carlo uh, Crocco. Okay. And it's not to get confused with uh, Carlo Crocco, the t famous Italian chef. They just happen to have the same name. But this Carlo Crocco can comes from a very prestigious family of jewelers and watchmakers in Italy. Okay. And um, he struck out on his, on his own. He, got an investment together and he founded Hublot, the original Hublot. So when is this? 1980. Okay. And at first, it, it debuted at Basel, yeah. right? And at first, it kind of lukewarm reception, but yeah. then towards the 90s, Elton John started wearing one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prince Albert of Monaco, mm -hmm. um, Giorgio Armani. Oh. So you have these like, you know, celebrities, yeah. And personally, one of my favorites, it's funny because I noticed this when I was researching a Seiko video, okay. was uh, Giorgetto Giugiaro. Okay. So in 83, he got hired to, to design, uh, Ital design, uh, his company got hired to do the Seikos. Okay. The, the Ripley, all this yeah. crazy, crazy stuff. To, to much acclaim and really revitalize what Seiko were doing. But I was looking at pictures of him during that era. He was wearing the original Hublot. Okay. So Hublot means uh, p uh, port, um, like a porthole in French. Yes, 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 it right. does, yeah, ship's portal. And you tell the time, the hours is the, the screws around. A little bit like Royal Oakish in, mm -hmm. that, in that futuristic yep. look, right? 
I kind of like the early ones, right? So then anyway, uh, 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 Jean-Claude Beaver took over because sales started waning. Okay. So he, they hired him in, you know, he does his thing. He's done this so many times with yeah. so many He's different... He's been a couple different brands. Yeah, yeah, a couple of different brands. 2005, yeah, that's right, 2005, he came out with the Big Bang, oh, right? Oh, okay. And that was the start of a different era of Hublot. Mm -hmm. The oversized trend, oh, yeah. which I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of. Right. Aesthetically, I kind of like the look of them, but right. they're just huge. Mm -hmm. And growing up in the UK, for me, I don't know what it's like over here, but uh, it was very popular with like, you say soccer, but football stars, okay. yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Loud, outlandish, big, exaggerated. Yeah. It was the height of that oversized trend. Brightling came and started doing their Brightling yeah, for Bentleys. Yeah, a lot right, of, I just said the same thing. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. a lot of people were jumping on that bandwagon. Yeah. We're only just coming out of it. Yeah, right. Well, Royal Oak offshore, like right that. offshore. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you very. Yeah, perfect. Did Jean Claude Beaver? Uh, did he start this oversized trend? What was? Who? Who was Oof. behind it? It's. It's a kind of interesting question. Yeah. I don't know. But the, the, the stigma attached to that from, as a result from Watch Enthusiast. Yeah. 2010, they introduced the Fusion Classic Collection. Okay. And it was going back to the very beginning. The, 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 the Genesis. Yeah, the, the 80s. The ones that Giugiaro wore, right. that is very 80s. And I like them, I really okay. like them. They have the Black Magic mm -hmm. ones, which are like ceramic, mm -hmm. very modern again. They have uh, titanium ones. Beautiful sunburst dials with yeah. blue ones. Yeah. Like, and they're, they're, they're great. 38 normal. millimeters. Normal. Yeah, normal watches. Normal. I, I so came close to buying one. And this is 2000. So they came out 2010, 2010 to. Uh, yeah, 2010 as a 30th anniversary of the brand. To pay homage to the original, yeah. uh, the original ones. And they, they're very faithful. They, yeah. they look, they have that look. Even you can get big ones, obviously. There's yeah. ones with complications, etc., etc. Okay, five, seven, eight grand on the on the grey market, and it has a Salita SW200. Yeah. Okay, if I bought one, I'd never hear the end of, of it. Of course, you know, <laughs> he's like, oh my, TGV bought a Hublot, but I can't help but like the classic yeah. fusion. It's okay. It's, it's, you're, it's, you're forgiven. It's a handsome bit of 38 millimeters. I might yeah. buy one just to annoy everyone. I think uh, I kind of a good idea. quite like being the contrarian. And, right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your thought on Hublot? Well, you know, they jumped the shark for me when, I want to say it was like 2017 or so. They're like a watch companies, Rolex does this, Rolesium. They make all their own oh, metals. Oh yeah, yeah, Hublot. Keep, Hublonium. <laughs> And that was just... When you first told me that, I thought it was a I joke. Was, and I was like, and so when the person told it to me, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's serious. Right, right, <laughs> right. Oh my God, <laughs> Hublonium, that's priceless. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, hey, if you like it, man. Uh, yeah, uh, please do share in the comments. Should I buy one? And just <laughs> annoy everybody with it and really love it. You Ultimate know? troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm tempted. Um, yeah, so that's that's my pick. Really. Okay, cool. Uh, back to you. Uh, let's see. I'll go. So I'm gonna go to a a genre of watch, mm. um, and I just think it's it's cool. It's not very efficient. It's okay. not very good at telling the time. Single handed, twenty four hour watches. Oh, nice. So like a Boda or a Meister Singer. Singer. I own a Meister Singer, yeah. right? I, but it's a twelve hour. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, but the twenty four hour ones are even harder to read. Because oh it's my God. one revolution in a whole day. Mm. And, you know, I know people look at it like, well, I can't tell the time. And I kind of agree. You know, you got to... Yeah, do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're counting. Um, but I love things that tell time in different ways. Yeah. Whether it be my, my, my Geochron, I have a pyramid clock. Um, That's the engineer in you. Yeah, I love stuff that just, you know, just does it differently. And yeah. I don't know, I, something draws me. Like I said, my Meister Singer, I wear it and it's kind of cool. And people yeah. look at it and they're like, well, what the hell are you wearing that for? You can't tell the time. Right. I'm I, like, yeah, I get it. I, I did review one back in the day. And you sh uh, we, should, we should say that Meister Singer is, uh, are they from Pforzheim in Germany? Well, they're from Germany. I don't know what Not quite from. sure. It where... might be. I know a lot of companies are from Pforzheim. I don't know. Well, Meister Singers is uh, one of my favorite Wagner operas. Um, but the, the <laughs> Sorry. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> I love the crescendo at the yeah. end. Yes, nice. 
I'm so glad you mentioned that because when I did the review, mm -hmm. I, I was reading their website and they said something along the lines of, we wanted you to appreciate time more in a pure, in a purer way. Right. right. And, and you, you said like, you have to stop and really concentrate. Yeah, and, and see the time. See the time. Yep. Yeah, that's extraordinary. And the bigger, the better. So like the 45s, it's even easier because I mean, the, the movement of the, of the hand is, they do a wonderful job. You actually can get astounding accuracy. Even with my 12 hour, you mm. can tell time within two minutes, I would say. Mm. With the 24 hour, maybe it's gonna be more like three or four minutes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just cool, right? It makes you look twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the whole idea of a 24 hour dial because it's, you know, the sun, everything. Yeah. It's a 24 hour cycle. Right, a bit like the Cosmonaut, the, the, um, the brightening. Yeah. When I wore it the first time, I thought it was broken. Right, yeah, look at the time. Yeah, and I, I kept thinking, what's on? going on? Is it upside down? Yeah, Do I have yeah. it upside down? Yeah, but yeah. that was because space travels, there's no yeah. day or night. Right. They wanted it. Um, I talked about it ad nauseum. Imagine if there was one just with the minutes. You didn't know what hour it was. That would be like some kind of like artist's idea. Of yeah, watch, you know? <laughs> just completely. Like one of the people, probably one of the people I would have went to school with, they thought it was, probably thought it was a great it's idea. It's 45 minutes to, yeah. who knows? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> we ever see those clocks, right? Where it's, it's all the numbers is falling at the bottom. Right, So right, right. it just says, who cares at the top? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the clocks that it's just, um, so it's a hand that revolves once a week. And it's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Really? Wednesday. Yeah. That and exists? That's it. Just, yeah, it's a wall what? clock. Wow. Yeah, so that's it. That's interesting. How long have you owned your most? Oh my goodness. Wow, it's probably... Do you wear it? Rarely, yeah. rarely. Um, it's a little, it's large. It's, I have the 43, I believe. Wow, okay. Um, it's about a dozen years old, I would say. I try to grade it by my kids. So I'm trying to remember how old <laughs> one of my kids was. It's about a dozen years old. Wow. It still runs, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Manual Cream rides? dial? No, it's the auto. Is it? It's the auto, yeah. I don't so know why that seems thicker. more bizarre. Yeah, it should. I should have went for it, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, because in a way, manually winding it, it's even more paying attention to. Yes, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah but setting fun. it's a lot of fun. You know, you need to start turning because because you know, like when you set a watch, right? When you turn the crown, the minute hand might go, but the hour hand is kind of moving slow, right? right. So when you set it, it kind of gives you like a false. It's like a false feeling because as you spin it, the hour hand just moves like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> wow, 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 that's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, what is my next one? Okay, mine is also a genre. Oh, good. Uh, it's the very tiny classical mid-century dress watch. Okay. Okay, and I think, this is my prediction for 20... Oh. Wait, by the time this goes out, it will be 2023. For 2023 and 2024, I think the next big watch trend is going to be dainty, tiny little dress watches. Give me a number, 28, 30, 32. What size are we talking? I have a few that are like 33, but I think that's a bit pushing it, but... Uh, okay, the reason... I, yeah, go I, ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, it's I fine. I derailed you. No, no, no. It's fine. It's, it's perfect, actually. I'll, I'll preface this because... Shout out to my friend John, who you know. Yep. Um, he told me about Keanu Reeves, right? Mm -hmm. He wears... Uh, the uh, Patek Ellipse, okay. right? Are you familiar with that watch? No. So it's a kind of oval elliptical shape, oh. right? And the ratio is, it's called the golden ellipse. It's, um, yeah, it's golden ratio. Yeah, exactly. Fibonacci. There yeah, you go. There uh, you guys go. everywhere, man. Yeah. So they built it according to his ratio. Sure. And it's a very, it's an acquired taste. It's longer than it is wide. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. And it's super, super thin. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, two-hander. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And I got into this watch because I did a video on, I'll put a link there. There we go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I did a video on the villain, what, vi uh, Bond villains. Yeah, villains, I remember that. Yeah. Video, yeah. And one, sure enough, there was uh, an ellipse in there, Patek. And then I was talking to John and he said, oh, you know, I saw Keanu Reeves. He, he, he's famous for wearing one. And I was like, really? But he wears it with a leather jacket, yeah. right? And well, he always dresses in black, right? Yes. He's an interesting actor because he's, he's, you know, synonymous with the 90s, with Speed, with The Matrix, all of this stuff. And he's had a kind of resurgence yeah. recently with the John, John Wick, Wick franchise. Exactly. Which I haven't even seen one yet. I saw the first one. I haven't uh, seen it. I never it was watched. okay. It was all right. He's supposed to be a really nice guy, though. Yeah, it's supposed they to be. They say he's supposed to be like heart gold kind of Exactly, person. yeah. Oh, yeah so he has like this, yeah, he has this cult following. He's yeah. much beloved by a lot of people. Yeah. 
But when I saw this picture of him wearing with this leather jacket, this tiny little it's mid century. So opposite. Yeah, but it works. Yeah, okay. And I was just like, oh, it's a bit like Bond and his tux and a diver. Before right, right. that, it was like, oh, no, no, you can't right. possibly wear that. Oh, with okay, a, okay. <laughs> can't possibly. Gosh, you know, poorly. You know, a bit, um, what's the bad form, you know? All this <laughs> kind of stuff. But like every so often something happens when somebody does something that, that is so different, yeah. but, but it works. Yeah. And I love little classic dress sizes. I think with um, post-lockdown world, right? I think people, I, I certainly want to dress up more. I wanna, right. When I go to a restaurant, I want to put my jackets, because I've been in, I've been in a tracksuit for two yeah. years. You know? I put on my best hoodie when I go to a restaurant. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We're about to go in a moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to, I want to, Get into dress watch. So you're know. saying we're going downwards? Because I mean, I definitely the trend in watches is it, it, yeah. it's going down, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, definitely. definitely. I, I, I did a 40, and people were like, "Where's the 38?" I did a yeah. 38. You know what they're saying? Where's, where's 36? the 36? 36. And I did a 36. Some people are saying, "Where's the 34?" Oh, I didn't do my wrist watch. It's uh, oh, I'm sorry. Laurier 36 Safari. There we go on the Melange. I love that. Paris County Watch Club. It there we nice. are. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and maybe it looks good on him because it's the golden ratio. Golden ratio is supposed to be perfect for everything. Well, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Well, he, he is a handsome chap. As, he is, as a, he is. Uh, yeah. he's rugged and... Yeah, my wife likes him, yeah. Hmm. So that's a big <laughs> seal of approval. I'll probably edit that out. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying is not that... Okay, every time I wear a little dainty dress yeah, watch... Yeah, you feel I, like... I, f I feel suited and booted. Yeah. I feel a bit more elegant and yeah. I like that classicism, mm -hmm. right? But there's always somebody in the comments like, you're wearing a woman's you're watch. You're wearing a woman's watch. Well, that's what I get to. Oh, well, one of the comments on the Range Master, because right. it's 38, was, when are you making it in a man size? Uh, and I, that does, I, I think it's hysterical that people say that. Yeah. It cracks me up, but as, yeah. As if a watch size is going to define how manly you are. Yeah. yeah. I like, my, my dad's Concord is that I wear. The Mariner, I think it's 34. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... Imagine all the all the uh, mil spec Hamiltons, uh, uh, yeah. from World War Two, uh, thirty four millimeters, yeah. smaller than this. Yeah, crazy. And those people were in living hell. You know, yeah. like uh, I, I would like to say say the same to them. You know. Yeah, definitely. No, <laughs> yeah. you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other okay, discussion. Okay. So you feel okay. So, but then you're. What's the smallest watch you own? Uh, Adamar Piguet dress watch, two yeah. hands, gold, thirty three millimeters. Okay. Super thin. Yeah. Super thin. Which actually works the advantage of, of producing more size. I mean, when you look, I, I just feel like in the in the eyeball thing, mm. when you look at it, the thinner it is, I feel like the wire. A lot of times, it your yeah. mind perceives it right. Actually, bringing it back to the, the yeah. Range Master. Yeah. It when when you show me pictures, oh, it's a bit mighty. It's a bit because yeah. of the bezel and everything. Yeah. But because we made it's it so like, thin. It's ten. ten. Yeah, ten millimeters. Uh, when it, you put it on, it's like, oh my god, like this is something else, yeah. you know. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It, 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 yeah, but I, it's that design to slip under a cuff. I love that, you know. Like I like the discreetness. Yeah. I, I want to return to an age where people would take more pride in their, you know, dressing up. You see, for... I have. I should measure it. I have a Torno dress watch that my parents gold, uh -huh. fourteen karat solid gold that my parents got me for college graduation. Mm. It's small. It's I gotta measure I'd like it. To see that. It's like a thirty-four. It's like an it's an enamel dial. Oh. Two hands, quartz. I want to say it's like thirty-four or so. I'll have to measure it up. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of anything else. To no, say. I, it, it's. I think it's very. I think it's very telling. Like I said, the, the trend is definitely going down in yeah. size. Yeah. And the ellipse came out in nineteen sixty-eight, so it's still kind of like. That's when watch brands were like trying to outdo each other with thinness. thinness it was a sign yeah. of. Uh, watchmaking prowess yeah, kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then yeah. they happened again in the 80s. Oh yeah, yeah. with with Concord and with the Concord, Quartz. Yeah. Of course, nice. Piaget, all those guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, back to you. What is next for you? I gotta think. Oh, my third one. It's a watch I used to sell. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's um... I called them... What did I call them? I called them drum roller watches or... Oh tum God! Yeah, you sent me dial. the video. Yeah, oh yeah tum my God. tumbler dial or roar. Yeah. They called it drum roller, I think. And I guess it's kind of ghastly to some people, <laughs> right? So it was a forty-four millimeter watch, and it was I want to say fifteen thick. And 
So it's got four, and you'll obviously put pictures of it, right? Yeah. It's got four dials, and each one is just—it's a roller. Yeah. And it just—it's a mechanical rolling clock, and it reminds me of you know my parents or my dad had a clock in his office, one of those classic '80s clocks. I forgot who made it, right? right. And, it had a little, and every time it would change the time, you hear it go. And the number would roll. Right, and right, right. It was so cool. So when I saw these, one of the manufacturers I dealt with came out with it. I had to have them. It's yeah. a hundred bucks, and they're just so they're so out there. There's no hands, right? It's just yeah. four little rollers, and it's got to be thick because the rollers spin around. The one you had, why does it got? Why does it have a big red star on it? Because the name of the company was, was Red Star. It was Red Star. Oh, it was Red Star. Yeah. So what well, kind of is? Um, they go by a couple different names. Um, they make a lot of the. Um, the Seagull 1963 style watches. Ah, so they yeah. are, they're from China? Yeah, oh, ah, def okay. oh, without a doubt. All those watches were from China. Because um, it looked all like the some kind dials. of, um, what do they call it? It, called, it looked like a Heineken. Yeah. To me, it reminded me of a Heineken bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks a bit like um, retro steampunk kind yeah, of like Soviet. Yeah, yeah, if it had like maybe you know, a, little, like a little chain come out of it or something. Yeah, 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 yeah it could yeah. be, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, I own one, right? I had one of, I took it, I got it. They gave me one as a gift when I was in Basel years ago, and it still runs. I don't think I've changed the battery yet. That's four years ago. Wow. Okay. And yeah, and, and every time it, it, when you're wearing it, you hear it. You hear it clean. Yeah. And then when it changes the hour, oh, every all four rollers are going. Oh my God. So, okay, so aside from obviously left-leaning socialist uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, aesthetics, yeah, the, um, the Red Star, yeah. the way it tells time, it's very big. Yeah. Well, it, there's a whole different, there was a, all, all different colorways. They were just plain right. white ones, plain black ones, yeah. So is, the, uh, is that what people don't like about it? Number one, the thickness. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's like 15 millimeters thick. Yeah. And two, there's, there's no hands. Just get a digital watch. If you want to see numbers, right. just get a digital But for me, it's the whole, that's just so cool. It's yeah. over complicating something that should be extremely simple it, it's 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 digital in analog form right speaks about you as a collector because yeah. i notice you always go for engineering first yeah oh yeah the way the watch tells time yeah and that's typically what alienates mm -hmm. people are they still available these things you know i don't sell them anymore they got to still be available right yeah i stopped selling them they you know it was they were popular um, popular a bunch of people liked them and mm -hmm. you know had a bunch of them and then it kind of petered out after a while. Right, right, right. So um, I'm going to go with my last thing. Yeah, sure, what do you got? And it's homage watches. <laughs> a bit on the, that's a bit on the nose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason is I, I should I should clear something up. I get every time I bring up homage watches, someone in the comments always says, "Oh, but you are so anti homage watch." I've never been anti homage watch. You're anti replica. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, and the, the reason for this confusion come, is because I did a video in 2000, I think it was 18 or 17, I can't remember, okay. where I said um, seven reasons, six reasons, nine reasons, whatever it was, uh, that you shouldn't buy a homage watch. Okay. Right? I took the, those nine or whatever, how many reasons it was, mm -hmm. and I basically destroyed the argument. Got it. So in a reverse of ah, okay, I got right? you, I got so you. people, the people who <laughs> read the headline, <laughs> read the headline, don't watch but the content. don't watch the content. I haven't changed my stance whatsoever. Right. The the whole homage discussion, for me, I see it. I, I wouldn't have got into watches hadn't it of been for have been of been wouldn't have been wouldn't have been sorry for homage watches. Okay. Technically, the, the Citizen Eagle 7, which I bought yeah, as a we, student, yeah. I've, I think we discussed it Yeah, before. we had that discussion, yeah. Yeah. It's a date just. It is. Fluted bezel. Sure is. Uh, or, or in three star, date just. That's yeah. Everything's Fluted fine. bezel. Uh, Invicta Joker. Julie, yeah. yeah Homage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But think how many people probably didn't know about it. Maybe they liked Batman. That's, that's the now that's they one watch. of the. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Oh. Um, now, obviously, some are better than others. Sure. You know, like. Um, I'm not a massive fan of like the Paganis and the AliExpress stuff because I, I, I feel I, I, my issue is always the, the customer care and, mm -hmm. and sure. you know, like you got to understand from my perspective, if a hundred people are watching this and I, and I say, yeah, buy that watch, it's fine. Then 10 people have Problem. issues with the, and then, yeah. And and then, so you told me you, yeah, yeah. And then they have issues with customer uh, support or whatever. Yeah or something misaligned or whatever. Yeah. 
think about it when you have a thousand people or a yeah. hundred thousand people, yeah. you know, so like there is a, a responsibility to really be quite, um, what's the word, not fastidious. Uh, I say specific, um, uh, no, the word I'm looking for is... Uh, to have standards, I guess. Yeah, I guess, that's you what know? I'm looking for, but it's okay. If but, it comes in my head, I'll let you know. But if you can afford a Steinhardt, for example, right. which is a really reputable, great company, I've bought from them, I've, I've had nothing but excellent customer care from yep. them. I don't own any anymore because I just, I've, I fell out of love with them. I, I think it was a GMT I had and then I got the real GMT, so it was... There you go. Yeah. It soothed the, uh, it soothed the itch. Yeah, exactly. But if you saw a person wearing a GMT, uh, a Steinhardt, yeah. right, the, mo the chances are that they're going to be a watch enthusiast. I would tell you, as a watch person. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to hear your, your feedback on like the legality of... <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of. It's funny you ask me these questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what I, you know, what I know. I'm not a, not an attorney. Okay. <laughs> Disclaimer. Disclaimer, Ding. right there. Yeah. Um, so there's there's copyright, there's trademark, there's patent, and that's usually the three things that people throw up. Copyright is for none, none of this stuff is copyright. Copyright is for books, right. literature, right? right. Copyright expires a number of years after the person dies, and this and that. There's two things that most people don't talking about, and it's it's patent and trademark. Trademark will just be taking a, any watch you want, take your pick, it doesn't make a difference, it can be a Casio, and putting Seiko on the dial. That'll mm -hmm. be trademark infringement. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Um, you want to take something that looks like an F91 and write TGV across where it said Casio and produce it, you're more than welcome to. You can. There's nothing going on there. Um, that's trademark infringement. And then there's patent. This is one people a lot of times think like, uh, I'll, um, you know, Islander, for example, because I make the SKX007 kind of homage. Mm. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing patented there at mm. all. And if there was, it would have expired because mm -hmm. patents only last about 17 years. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to literally do something that they patented. Let's do a great example. Um, Rolex with trip lock, tri lock, all those, mm. the different the oyster oh, case. Oh, technology. That's a technology, that's right. a patent. You cannot produce a case like that while it's under patent protection. Mm -hmm. Rolex can sue you. Uh, absolutely 100%. Um, the name Triplock is a trademark. Mm -hmm. The way it's built is a patent. Um, so you couldn't produce something that they produce. But like uh, something like the SKX 007, it's a piece of stainless steel with a crown at four, mm -hmm. holds a movement, a dial, hands. There's nothing that's, even if it was patented, it would have expired so anyway. Does, that explains why Invicta can make their pro divers. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, and no one will really come after that. Has there ever been an instance where a watch company has said, no, you, that's too much like ours, you can't So what happens is it's not, no, because that's not, that's like, that's IP at that point. That's intellectual property. But once you put it out in the market, that's why, that's why companies patent things well before they're in the market so mm -hmm. that when it hits market, they're prepared. Um, uh, where was I going? Trademark is the big one that they'll get, and I've been I've been hit with trademark a number of a couple of times, but totally inadvertently, honest honesty, you know, I made a mistake saying what kind of bracelet this is. Right. I did not know that they own the trademark to this name. Mm. They do. It's theirs. It's certifiable. It's in the books. It's right. USPTO.gov. You can look it up. There's been a couple of brands like um, like Orient used to make a, a Submariner clone, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they just everybody stopped. did. And Everybody did. stopped one day. Yeah. Like, un, no one said a word. Like, why they stopped? I have my. Uh, do you think? Do you think it? But, do you think it damages brands? Because, for example, like Squalet, for example, mm -hmm. which we both love, mm -hmm. they do uh, homages of Submariners. But yes. the thing I realized is, I, I looked at a case they did for Blanc Pan mm -hmm. way back in, and I'm not talking about the 1521. They did a Submariner style case mm -hmm. for Blanc Pan. Okay. Does that legitimize them in some way? Or, or are they damaging their own brand by, by offering homages? Because obviously it's going to be a money... It's always a money grab. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people are. No, I don't think it damages anything. It's just, it's business. Mm. We're, all in, we're all in business together. And if it means you can grab more market share or offer something different. Yeah. Or, and again, and as long as you're not, you know, ripping off patent or trademark right. there's really now the consumer may look and say well he's just ripping off xyz and i will not support them that's your yeah your that's fine. You're you vote with your wallet, wallet yeah right? you you boycott whatever you want do yeah. whatever you want that's your own prerogative if you yeah. want but you know that's 
I'm glad you asked me because I see comments about it all the time, especially in relation to my own brand is, you know, oh, all you're doing is ripping off X, Y, Z. How is what you're doing not illegal? It's, it's not. Yeah. And, and the, the funny thing is they, they, they will say that to you, but they won't say anything to like IWC doing an identical Flieger or, yeah. or um, I've got some examples here. Uh, Bulova is another one, or Bulova. Um, <laughs> <laughs> During the time of this recording, Braemont just came out with the Supernova, which looks exactly like the bracelet looks like a Royal Oak. Okay. And it's got all kind of Nautilus vibes. Got and it. The Cassie Oak. Yeah. You know? That, that one blows my mind. Blows my I mind. Know. Yeah. That one, yeah. Really? I mean, I'm like, wow, I can't. That's talk, talk about going on the nose on that one. They yeah. really, I mean, obviously, I don't think they name it Cassie Oak, you know, society. Right, right, right. Does, right. Yeah. But you guys did. I mean, you yeah. look at that thing and you're like, holy smoke. It's clever, though. It's great and it's beautiful. I love how they put their G Shock technology yeah, their spin into, into it. it. Yeah. yeah. Which makes it, is it a copy or is it influenced by? It's homage, I would say. That's a true homage. Yeah. I feel there's two definitions. Oh. Yeah. There's the definition by us watching two Yeah, years. it's a big, that's true too. And then there's... The yeah. real, the, the Webster, Miriam exactly. Webster. But you know, it's, um, the, the, it puts, to me, that puts the Royal Oak on the radar of so many more people. Now. Right, you right, right. Casio, pump Oh, there's T -T -So PRX. That's yeah. another one. That's yeah. another one. Yeah. Uh, and then you could argue, well, that's not because they had one back in the 70s and everyone was doing yeah. I, I've uh, seen an AP style. Yeah, I've everybody. seen it said that every watch is a ripoff of every other watch and it's, it's, that's not too far from the truth. Yeah, got Tudor here. Mm -hmm. There's an, oh, there, there, you go. there he is. Tudor Samara, yeah. look at that. <laughs> and I've put it on a Jubilee and I can say that because it's a Rolex Jubilee. What was I going to ask? There was I one more thing. That. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to me, Ultimately, what it boils down to is they give people enjoyment. Yeah. I still buy homage watches. Mm -hmm. I haven't grown out of it, and I, I own many high-end pieces, and I still get fun out of them. They have a purpose, but anything that gets people away from the smartwatch or the illegal watch, the illegal watch is watch. a friend yeah. to me. I see it like this. It's like it's helping... It's helping them. It's funny, you would, so you're basically putting smartwatch in the same bin as illegal watches. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's my disdain uh, for them. Lie. Listen, I, if you have a smartwatch, that's great. They're very useful. Step counters, all this stuff, fitness, but it shouldn't be your only watch. Okay. That's and please don't wear them with suits. I'm sorry, but they do not look good. <laughs> they never look good with a suit. Yeah. It, it's what, like flip-flops. Did you see the Moser? Yes, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Apple Watch. That's funny because you could wear that with a suit, but yeah. nobody's going to know what it's it is. It's so cool, that, and that's yeah. what makes it so great. It's yeah. like a $30,000 Apple Watch. That's that's trolling on a whole different that's a level. Troll. Oh, they, but Moser does that a lot. Moser did yeah. that a while ago with another conglomeration they made. There's some weird Pepsi They thing. did like a whole, like it was a tourbillon. Yeah, with yeah. A, oh, and then they God, also did, monstrous. years ago, they made a watch which that's that's the best example in this category of yeah, Mozart, the yeah. troll the tr the yeah. horterology troll, troll watch. Yeah, they made a watch with a dial made out of Swiss cheese to oh, prove yeah, the yeah, point yeah. that they could say the watch was Swiss made because they're right, basically mocking right, right. the whole Swiss made thing. Ah, right, yeah. brilliant! I love it. That was genius. <laughs> the fact that it's high end yes. also adds salt yeah, to the Yeah, oh my god, you know? it certainly does. It's great. It's right in the face. Yeah, totally. And I love that they do that. Guys, share your uh, most. Uh, most infuriate? No, what, what's incendiary? What's a word that... Incendiary is a good yeah? one. Yeah, it causes a lot of... Causes, the, yeah. Watches people really hate that you like. Please share in the comments below. Once again, thank you so much to Mark Woo! for sponsoring the production of this video. Uh, please don't forget to like this video. I forgot to do it last time. Oh, did you? Uh, you know what? I'll cut from this. Please don't forget to like this <laughs> Wearing video. Wearing the same clothes and yeah, watches. So exactly. It matter. <laughs> exactly. Please don't forget to like this video and uh, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you in the next one. Ciao.